Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the rest of the severe weather that is upcoming. Obviously, we already got through yesterday. I'm going to talk a lot about that in the very beginning of the video, how that went. But for now, we're going to talk about the severe weather that is still upcoming. Now, for today's comment of the day, how we've been kind of doing things is just asking you guys what risk level you think we will get to for each individual day. So today, I'm asking you for next Tuesday... What risk level do you think we will end up getting to? I know it's a little bit longer range, but we like the bold calls here from you guys. It's fun to see who can be right and who will be wrong. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. So let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now here's our storm reports from yesterday. It was actually pretty bad on that very western uh, area of that enhanced risk that we had. Uh, the eastern front did not really pan out quite as much, thankfully. Uh, but that one in between Texas and uh, Oklahoma really got slammed. Six tornado reports, 20 wind reports. Uh, those were kind of scattered about quite a bit. And then 63 hail reports. So we had a huge severe weather day in general yesterday. Uh, six tornadoes obviously uh, was quite a bit for one day, you know, considering we only had a 5% chance of tornadoes. Uh, so yeah, pretty bad day yesterday. I hope everybody is safe and sound after that was all said and done. Let's just take a look at the day one categorical outlook here. So this is going to be for the day today now. And as you can see, we have two general thunderstorm risks, one there for Oregon and Idaho. That should just be some showers and general thunderstorms, obviously. But we have the one on the very southeastern corner of the United States. It's kind of expanding up through the mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, but we mostly have that darker green marginal risk we're worried about for some isolated severe weather to take place. And then that slight risk within there, the yellow region, that's where we expect maybe some scattered severe weather. And then that orange area there for, for Alabama, Georgia, and a little bit of uh, Florida there as well, especially the Panhandle. And that's where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to be possible. Let's just go down those individual risks now. Here is our wind outlook. And as you can see, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location for some damaging wind to take place there in the green region. 15% chance there in the yellow. And then a 30% chance there in the red for Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. So we're really concerned about that area. Obviously, a 30% chance within 25 miles of a given location is rather high. Now, for the hail risk, we also have a pretty similar outlook here. Just a little bit of a different location, as you can see. Again, 5% in the green, 15% chance there in the yellow, and then a 30% chance there in the red for Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. We also have that hatched risk area there. That's where we expect 2-inch diameter or more hail to be possible uh, there. So we're a little bit concerned about that as well, obviously. Uh, some larger hail is possible. Now, for the tornado risk, this is what I'm especially concerned about. And I said yesterday, I think a 10% chance is what we will get to for today. I even see with how large this is a chance that they go ahead and give it a 15%. So we're going to be watching for that as well. A 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location for a tornado to take place there in the green. 5% chance there in the brown. And then a 10% chance there in the yellow region. So that's mostly for Alabama, Georgia, and then the panhandle of Florida. We do have a significant hatched region there as well for Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. And that's where EF2s or above seem to be uh, quite possible throughout the day today. So today's the bigger tornado day, it appears, uh, just based on you know the parameters we have set in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the model guidance, temperature, dew point, cape, and even the shear, and then the simulated radar for the day today. All right, now, as you can see, we have those temperatures. We have mostly 70s in place, mid to upper 70s, even some 80s uh, scattered about there as well. So it's going to be a really warm day. Obviously, that does translate pretty much to a pretty bad uh, thunderstorm day as well, especially with these dew points. Look at that, lower 70s, which is very, very uh, high dew points. And then we even see the upper 60s, which will also be sufficient. So uh, those dew points are pretty high. There And as you can see, we have a pretty widespread area of 3,000 to 4,000 cape here, convective available potential energy. This is going to be our thunderstorm fuel. So they kind of eat this up and it lowers and lowers and lowers, just like gasoline in your car. Uh, they eat this up to basically intensify, uh, and then they basically die down once the cape is run out. So we see the 3,000 to 4,000 amount. That's going to allow for these thunderstorms to continue developing uh, stronger and stronger and stronger. Usually in these high cape events, I look for a lot of hail because the stronger these storms get, the stronger the updraft gets, and that increases the hail size, uh, obviously, as those storms really get intense in these higher cape events. We also have quite significant amounts of shear. Uh, those pinks showing up especially is concerning for me, the browns to pinks there. That's where we have the higher amount of shear, but I'm telling you, throughout all of these severe weather regions, we have moderate to high shear at least. So tornadoes are going to be possible throughout the entire 
uh, thunderstorm region. Anywhere there's a thunderstorm, we're basically looking for a at least a chance of tornado. So be on the lookout today. Be aware uh, because that chance is elevated enough for me to be concerned, actually. Uh, and usually in these higher shear events, we look for mostly wind and tornado events. When we see the high cape and the high shear, you look for all severe weather uh, to be possible. Hail, wind, and tornadoes. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to be just like a little bit more educational for folks so that on their own, they can, um, you know, learn about this stuff and learn how to use these tools uh, to basically know what's upcoming for yourself. I think that's a very valuable thing in life, really. Uh, so we're taking a look at this morning, and I think what's going to spare us a lot here, and this is the reason why we don't have a moderate or a high risk of severe weather today, we have those showers in place ahead of these thunderstorms, and that's really going to eat up some of that potential. It's going to keep the temperatures lower, obviously, with the cloudiness uh, and the precipitation coming down that's not going to allow that sun to penetrate through. Uh, so this will lead to a little bit less of a severe weather chance. You can see those thunderstorms on the very southern end already. This is by 7 a.m., uh, so there already is some thunderstorms underway. But by the time we're reaching around 12 p.m. today, you can see that those thunderstorms for Alabama, especially there, and a little bit of Georgia, this is those embedded supercells that we're watching for. And by the time we're reaching about 2 p.m., you can see they are still around pretty much widespread for Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia as well, uh, basically the entire area here. Uh, still, by time by time we're reaching about maybe 8 p.m. here, so they are just widespread uh, throughout the entire severe weather region uh, still to this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and finish out this simulated radar all the way through the night. And then we're going to take a look at that day four probability outlook, which is for next Tuesday, which is that next day we're concerned about. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at the temperatures, the dew point, the cape, and then a little bit of that simulated radar as well. Now to close things out, we're taking a look at one last frame of simulated radar, and this is by about 12 a.m. tonight heading into tomorrow. And as you can see, there will still be thunderstorms around for South Carolina and Georgia. So this one's going to be an all-day event. It's starting out this morning, and it's going to last well into this evening, overnight tonight. Uh, so this is going to be an all-day event that we're going to need to pay attention to. So please, please, please pay attention uh, to those warnings and watches and advisories, of course. Now, by the time we're taking a look at day four, and that's going to be Tuesday, April 27th, like I said, as you can see, we have a 15% chance of severe weather in place for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. We saw this the previous few days that this has been around, uh, and that will translate to a slight risk of severe weather for these regions. So we're going to be watching closely for that. The temperatures that day is going to be, this is by about 3 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, they're going to be in the 80s. This is going to be one of the warmest severe weather days we've taken a look at. So that's going to be a little bit interesting to see how that you know affects things. The dew points are a little bit lower than they are today. As you can see, we're expecting dew points in the mid to upper 60s. So this is going to be obviously something we need to pay attention to because today we have the 70s. It's more likely, obviously, for the Gulf states to have higher um, dew points than we see in you know western Texas, western Oklahoma, western Kansas. It's a little harder to get 70 dew points up there than it is for like Alabama and Florida. They get a lot more moisture from the Gulf. Uh, but still, upper 60s will be sufficient for severe weather. The Cape, because of this lower dew point, um, higher temperature, uh, it doesn't end up getting into the 3000s and 4000s, according to our European model. Or actually, I lied. It does get into the 3000s down there in Mexico. But generally, this is about 1000 to 2000 Cape, which I want you to keep in mind that is enough. Uh, so I don't want to act like that's not enough for severe weather to take place. Generally, we're usually just looking for 1,000 plus uh, for all types of severe weather to be possible. Uh, so I don't want to act like I'm downplaying it at all. Uh, we do have a lot of 2,000s in there too, which will definitely be enough. So by the time we're taking a look at about 3 p.m. here on Tuesday, April 27th, like I said, these thunderstorms will be firing up. Uh, but I think this is mostly an overnight event because they're really firing up by about 11 p.m. Uh, on Tuesday heading into Wednesday. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching about 6 a.m., you can see there's widespread thunderstorms. So I think these will translate into a more uh, saturated type of storm mode where it's just all over the place and less severe overnight that night. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about, I did make a Patreon post about the upcoming warm-up we're going to have because we're going to have a massive warm-up, guys. This is the temperatures this tomorrow. This is going to be Sunday. Uh, so as you can see, plenty of blues and greens around for the eastern United States. But look at Tuesday, guys. Lots of reds, lots of browns. We kind of have a, like a little bit of a heat wave coming up. Uh, definitely uh, a mini heat wave where we're going to have, you know, a lot of folks hit their first 80s, even mid to upper 80s like my region is going to be seeing. Uh, so it's going to get very warm in a hurry. It's 45 outside right now. In a couple days, we're going to be all the way up into the mid to upper 80s here where I'm at. So that is a very extreme 
uh, change we are going to be seeing coming up. And I think starting tomorrow, that's going to be the main topic I'm going to be talking about. Alongside that upcoming severe weather threat, I will also be talking about that upcoming massive warm-up. Anyway, our confidence tab, obviously we're talking about today in this video. So we are at a 6 out of 6. We feel very good about this. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what threat level do you think we will get to today for Saturday? And this was yesterday, 19 hours ago, as you can see. And Michael said, I say enhanced risk tomorrow for Southern Alabama and Georgia and the Florida coast. And I definitely think this was kind of like hitting the nail right on the head because now we wake up today and we do have an enhanced risk for today. So that was a great call there by Michael. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belomo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falegos, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. And then I would also like to thank our channel members, our Weather Top Dog, Hair Farms 1, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you'd like to join this, this is next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave as many comments as possible, and be sure to subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.